One of the biggest questions that I've got lately is if 8 gigabytes is enough RAM or should you go for the 16 gigabytes of RAM with the M1 Mac? Well, today I'm gonna to break this down and talk about it. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to tell you who should be going for the 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes with some real world examples. Firstly, let's understand where the limitation of RAM can occur and and how macOS handles this. The new M1 MacBooks have got a unified memory, which means rather than the graphics and CPU and other chips having its own memory, it is shared memory directly with the M1 chip, meaning that it can access as much memory as it needs and can use it at incredible speeds. However, if there isn't enough RAM, just like normal RAM on an Intel MacBook, then what it uses is a thing called swap memory, where if there isn't enough RAM to store the memory that it needs, then it is stored on the SSD as it's very fast to access. That way you won't get any crazy issues because you've maxed out your RAM. Due to the improvements of SSD speeds, you also won't notice any visual drop in performance. But how does this translate in the real world? Firstly, M1 optimized applications work super well with eight gigabytes of RAM. And I've been using the base MacBook Air with an external display to edit these 4K videos and multitask with no no issues. Swap memory has stayed at around two gigabytes, which is fine for me, and I foresee no long-term effects. Even during my tests, it used at its maximum three gigabytes of swap memory, and these were very extreme cases. And in order to see any kind of noticeable SSD performance degradation, you would have to write and rewrite much larger files on a consistent daily basis for years. Three gigabytes is just not the case. And I have SSDs that are maybe three, four years old, where I write and rewrite hundreds of gigabytes and I haven't seen a drop in performance with those. And those are much older SSD uh, architectures. In terms of performance between eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of RAM, when running benchmarks and tests for extended periods, it didn't affect performance having eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes as swap memory is so efficient nowadays. So if you plan on getting 16 gigabytes because you think it'll be faster when using Microsoft Office, Office or Chrome or even 4K editing and multitasking together, it doesn't make a noticeable difference. For almost everyone out there, eight gigabytes will be absolutely fine. Even though swap memory isn't as fast as RAM memory, for everyday tasks, including 4K HEVC and H.264 video editing, multitasking, and even photo editing, it's gonna be more than fast enough. The only time eight gigabytes would be an issue is if you are editing and exporting six or 8K video files, batch photo exporting 150 plus raw photos, or compiling very large projects. At this point, I would recommend 16 gigabytes for 6K and 4K video editing as you're gonna be using a lot more swap memory and this will affect your export times too. And for experienced coders, 16 gigabytes would be the road I would go down to. 16 gigabytes for these tasks are noticeably faster and will be better in the long term for you. For students who might be using Zoom, Microsoft Office and Chrome multitasking, eight gigabytes is gonna be absolutely fine for you. I wouldn't worry about swap memory for those tasks. However, if you're someone who does like to keep their laptop for more than sort of six to 10 years, as I know some of you do, then upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes. Not because you'll need 16 gigabytes, but for that peace of mind in those last few years that you keep it. But if you keep your laptop between sort of five to six years maximum, I don't think that it will have a noticeable effect on your SSD performance or reliability as SSDs nowadays are very reliable. If you want to know what I'll be doing and have my honest opinion on my circumstances, just in case it's similar to yours, I edit 4K videos almost daily and I do a lot of multitasking for work too, especially with Chrome, as I'm known to sort of have 10 to 15 tabs open at the same time. And I will be replacing my 2020 16 gigabyte Intel four port MacBook Pro with potentially the base eight book M1 MacBook Pro as it's so much quicker than my Intel MacBook and 16 gigabytes for me isn't worth the extra 200 pounds. Being a tech reviewer, I do tend to upgrade my gear as new things come out. And I will maybe plan on getting a new camera that films in 6K. So for me, I actually won't upgrade the base pro model to 16 gigabytes, but actually wait for the 14 inch or even 16 inch model when it's launched early part of next year. But 
there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on what you think and check out the links in the description down below. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarMoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button so you can see more from me. If you wanna see more from me right now, you know guys what to do. There's two videos right here, right here. Click on them, go ahead, you'll love them. <laughs> anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.